I did a poll on Instagram and the question was, what do you struggle with most in terms of food? And the answer that was the most popular was, I don't know what types of foods to eat. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what foods to eat. First, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and hit the bell for more health and fitness educational content. So there are two main things I think people I coach have struggled with in the past and they are what to eat and being able to listen to satiety signals. So knowing when to stop eating. I think if you can get good at both of those things, then you don't need to worry about metabolic syndrome. So now let's talk about what you need to eat in order to lose fat and how what you eat will either help your gut talk to your brain better or if what you're eating could be disrupting that connection and thus causing you to overeat. First, I'll talk about the science of feeling full and how the wrong foods can disrupt the signaling leading to metabolic syndrome. So your gut communicates with your brain from two pathways, hormones and neurons. In general, the hormonal signals are slower and referred to as chemical signaling, and the neuron signals are faster and referred to as mechanical signaling. An example of hormonal signaling or chemical signaling would be leptin being released by the gut to signal to the brain that it is full. An example of neuron signaling or mechanical signaling is if you eat a large meal or lots of fluid and experience distension of the gut. This affects the neurons in the gut and the neurons communicate with the brain to signal stopping the consumption of food or sometimes even vomiting. So when we eat foods high in fructose, alcohol and toxic seed oils, we are increasing inflammation and triglycerides in the bloodstream, making it harder for the body to make and distribute hormones that signal fullness. And the famine survival mechanism of the brain is always wanting to eat very calorically dense foods. So the part of the brain that tells us we need to keep eating actually speeds up in the presence of high sugar and high fat foods, leading to an energy crash, bloating, feeling sluggish, feeling tired, all that fun stuff. So processed foods high in fructose corn syrup, toxified seed oils, and alcohol would all cause metabolic syndrome when consumed long term because they disrupt both the hormonal and neuron signaling to the brain, telling us we are full and we can stop eating. More notably, they also increase systemic inflammation, making it harder to exist in general because the body is not meant to always be fighting off inflammation. In addition to managing inflammation, reversing metabolic syndrome means losing visceral adipose, so belly fat, and gaining skeletal muscle, so getting more toned. In order to lose fat and gain muscle or sustain muscle, that means you will need nutrient-dense foods. When you are nutrient deficient, you develop metabolic syndrome. When you are nutrient satisfied, your body will release its stored fat and you'll feel vital and alive. The top eight metabolic diseases in America, and I'm assuming Canada as well, are type two diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia, fatty liver disease, and polycystic ovarian disease or syndrome. Because these diseases all fall under the same umbrella, the lifestyle approach for all of them would be pretty similar, but my area of expertise right now is type 2 diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, fatty liver, and PCOS, because those conditions are ones that I have worked with directly. So. I do not do functional testing for nutrient deficiencies because I'm not a certified functional medicine doctor. So I just got good at memorizing symptoms and experimenting with supplements early on. 
The story that comes to mind is back a couple of years ago when I worked at a gym as a personal trainer. My manager was getting all of these flu symptoms. So fatigue, insomnia, um, his mood was super low. And I told him one day to take these specific vitamins. So I'm pretty sure I told him to take magnesium, vitamin D, omega-3, and DHEA. So he actually did it and he was like shocked at how much better he felt and told like everyone he knew because he was so excited to just feel better. And I think he was also excited because of how simple it was. So that kind of led to other things unfolding. But sometimes when you just understand what the body is trying to tell you and then translate that knowledge into action, you just start to feel better. So there are symptoms that happen before the diagnosis of disease and the guy I helped was showing these symptoms. So if he just kept doing nothing, then maybe he would have ended up developing something. I don't know. But the point I'm trying to make is diet and nutrients matter a lot in the process of reversing symptoms and ultimately reversing disease. A diagnosis never just happens out of nowhere. There are things or pathologies to the accumulation of disease. The symptoms or pathologies related to the eight metabolic diseases I mentioned before are in no particular order. Joint pain and fibromyalgia, infertility and irregular menstrual cycle, chronic fatigue, fat gain in the belly area, issues with memory and depression, chronic bloating, digestive issues, and loss of skeletal muscle. So these symptoms, if you go to the doctor, they will have no idea what to do other than blood work, which would come back as normal. I mean, based on my experience, because in order for them to give you a treatment, they need to have a diagnosis. So they'll either put you on Ozempic, corticosteroids, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which is putting a band-aid over and worsening the root problem, which is metabolic dysfunction. The reason why I'm saying this is because I have a solution in the form of diet. So yes, I am not a functional medicine doctor. I just got good at memorizing and understanding what symptoms mean and then experimenting with dietary strategies based on research and education. The foods that you eat to reverse metabolic syndrome fall under these three categories, protein, omega-3, and fiber. I'll list some of my favorite from each category, and then I'll talk a bit more about the science of um, hunger, satiety, and what you should feel like after eating. Protein is a staple for reversing metabolic syndrome because in order to become a fat burning machine, you need muscle. Protein helps you build and sustain lean muscle if you are in a caloric deficit to lose fat. Protein is made from amino acids, which are the building blocks of every function in the body. So main takeaway, protein is important. <laughs> My go-to for protein are grass-fed red meat, free range poultry, organic Greek yogurt, I get the brand Olympic and I get 3%, canned fish, unflavored whey protein, and organic eggs. The next category is omega-3. So omega-3 is the most potent anti-inflammatory nutrient. So it is an inflammation resolver in the body and it helps you form new neural connections. In other words, it helps you lose fat, it makes you smarter, and it helps you form new memories. My favorite sources of omega-3 are canned cod liver, sardines, anchovies, salmon, and eggs. And also most grass-fed meats have a richer omega-3 content more so than non-grass-fed meats. So now we are at fiber. So fiber is how your gut bacteria build a mucus lining in the gut that is a protective net for ensuring endotoxins, aka inflammation, does not get into the bloodstream. In other words, it keeps your tummy happy and it keeps your bowel movements consistent. So the best sources of fiber for weight loss and reversing metabolic syndrome are 
avocado, dark leafy greens, squash, walnuts, green bananas, green apples, and blueberries. Um, so I'll finish up by saying that any combination of these foods would make a fantastic meal and to reverse insulin resistance, keep in mind that meal sizes are very important. So when you eat high quality food, you'll notice that you feel much fuller and more satisfied after eating it because you're enhancing your ability for your hormones and your neurons to communicate clearly with your brain. So to be able to tell you when to stop eating basically. And although my clients eat super healthy, I still track their macronutrients because too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So nutrient density and caloric control are both necessary for reversing metabolic syndrome and losing fat. The way you should feel after a meal is satisfied and energized not groggy and overstuffed. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what resonated with you. Also make sure you hit the bell for more health and fitness educational content. Until then, remember that you have the power to change any aspect of your life, especially your health.